It's not a secret to anyone that a church is the richest structure on earth. Official history tells us that Mount Athos has been the official command center for all of Christianity and Orthodox religion for the past 1500 years and one of the richest commercial structures. Right now in Greece, there is a default, there is a recession, but on Athos, there's no such thing. There's no recession on Athos. How did the holy monks reach such results? What did they use? And Jesus had said, follow me and I will make you the capturers of the humans. And at that time, they left their fishing nets and had followed him. He wanted to stop the flow of history. He wanted to make people into blind, faithful robots. And millions have followed him to the end. As we all remember, there was not one person in Germany that didn't scream Zikai. Management, people, communication systems, and technologies. The heart of the Atos system is the missionary technology. It allows to gain control over a certain territory. Somebody organized all of this. The question is why on Mount Athos, between all of the holy monks, there is a picture of Hitler. And they asked Hitler они просили Гитлера о его персональной защите. Why was Adolf Hitler a personal protector of the Holy Mount Athos? God, we always follow you. Bless us in our fight and our freedom. Bless the German people. What was the guy? And we're faced with a question. The question is not a very nice one. The question is, who thought all this up? What is the Orthodox religion really in the 21st century? In this film, it's not our goal to change your thoughts towards Christianity. If you have been paying attention, you have noticed that we are focused and we research power. That's why you will have to put your emotions aside if you really want to know how Mount Athos became the richest structure in the world. The past 1500 years, Mount Athos has expanded and branched out to all of the world. As we all know, a human has the ability to turn something that is used for good and turn it into evil. The subject that we are researching in this film is the technology of the missionary. There are certain conditions and certain knowledge that is required. The technology consists of 32 blocks. The blocks can be used either separately or all together. The point of the technology is if someone passes the 32 blocks, it will allow a certain person to have to gain power on a certain territory. Based on the first parts of the film, you can see that we have reason to believe that Hitler was the product of Mount Athos. Of course, it sounds unbelievable. To some people, this could be blasphemy. 
But we have all of the proof that the project under the name of Hitler was created using the technology that's called the technology of Mount Athos. The reasons behind why this project was created, we will talk at the end of the film. Right now we will talk about how this system, how this technology got into our hands. Well, first we looked at the missionaries themselves, we researched them, then we looked for a book, for a textbook, because it can't be that there's not a textbook for this technology. And this textbook ended up being the Gospel of Mark. The Gospel has different levels of coding, and on one of those levels it's a textbook for the missionary. As you can see, to create the technology of the missionary, the monks didn't need to go to any business coaches. They didn't need to go overseas. They didn't need any consultants. All they had to do is decode a holy literature that they deal with every day. We don't know how long it took the monks to decode this. One year, two years, or a couple of hundred years. We're gonna stop keeping you waiting, and we're gonna show you the result of the mind-boggling work that has been done by the scientist of, under the name of Oleg Maltsov. So moving forward, let's say that Hitler was just one of hundreds or even thousands of missionaries. In our case, we're going to use Hitler and the archives and information about him to compare with the technology, with the steps. The archives that we came up with, every single one of you can check. It's all out there. The first step of the technology. On a certain territory, arrives a person called a crowd warmer and came in, baptizing in the desert, preaching repentance in order for the sins to be excused. Paragraph from the Gospel of Mark. At first occurred National Socialism, and Rem was at the head of it. Hitler was not anywhere near. Rem was formulating assault groups. He was preaching about how National Socialism is good, how Jews are bad, and so forth and so on. And it was all covered by politics. And that's how the first step has been completed. The crowd warmer, Rem, has created the conditions for Hitler to come on out on stage. And Iwan preached as follows. After me will come the most powerful person. I am merely not worthy to bow to him. The first place where the young propagandist was noticed was at volunteer groups and social rallies. And now they start moving Hitler, because Ram could not speak like Hitler. People loved listening to Hitler. He was a public speaker at bars in Munich, on the streets, and this moved him along on his career. Ram was glad that this was going on, because more and more people or joining the working class, you know, the Nazi symbol, that's like the working class Germans. The first two stages have been fulfilled. The third stage, the crowd warmer has to leave the stage. Hitler had made it very clear to Rem that he's going to be the ruler. Rem had left Germany and went to South America. In Bolivia, Ernst Rem was receiving letters from Germany from the SA group. They were saying that Hitler was pressuring them, they didn't have money, and Rem had started to fulfill anti-Hitler propaganda from Bolivia. Rem tried to get in the way of the technology. By doing so, he put the whole operation at risk. By doing so, he paid a price with his life and lives of his loved ones. Passing by the Sea of Galileo, he saw Simon and Andre 
they were throwing the nets in the sea because they were fishermen. Lines from the Gospel of Mark. Focus your attention on what Hitler does. All of a sudden, four loyal, so to say, dogs appear around Hitler. Himmler, Bormann, Gering, and Goebbels. And Jesus had said, follow me, and I will make you the capturers of humans. And at that time, they left their fishing nets and had followed him. Gimmler became the head of the SS, and Bormann became Hitler's deputy. Hitler is faithful towards Bormann and Gimmler. Gimmler becomes the head of all the power systems such as SS and Gestapo. Bormann becomes the head of the political system, ideology and things like that. Goebbels becomes the Minister of Social Enlightenment and the Propaganda for Germany. Gering was assigned to be the face of Hitler in Berlin. In 1932, Gering becomes the head of Reichstag. When Rem tried to alter the conditions of the technology and openly went against Hitler, the missionary gets rid of Rem using his four loyal dogs. At a specific time, Hitler had to get Rem off the stage. In the end of July 1934, Hitler killed Rem and all of his Starting in 1931, for some reason, Hitler, the one who was preaching to voters on the streets, started going into churches. There could be multiple reasons, one of which may be asking forgiveness for his future sins, or just basically to get instructions. Ten years later, nobody was even hiding the relationship between Hitler and Nazis and Mount Athos. The holy monks of Mount Athos are welcoming with open arms the people that killed 50 million people during World War II. And a short distance from there, he walked and he saw they were also in the side the boat fishing, and he had called upon them, and leaving their father in the boat with other workers, they had followed him. Lines from the Gospel of Mark. In the meantime, Hitler had to somehow fulfill the financial part of the operation so that he could fulfill the other stages of the technology without any hiccup. Next, what do we do? Well, we recruit two businessmen. So who helped the Nazis get the money and so forth and so on? It's very simple. All right, so tell me the two most popular companies in Germany. And that was Krupp and Orf. In the 20s, Krupp was against the Nazi movement. But after he met with Hitler on April 20th, 1933, he changed his mind and started financially helping rearm Germany. So what do we have? We have automobile factories, planes, and Krupp. Krupp is a company that created metal and other things. And there you have the two businessmen. And those people were the first people to put on the Nazi symbols, the Nazi signs on them. And the reason they did it is because it's very beneficial for a businessman to have the backing, the support of the government. But not only businessmen were backing up Hitler. He also, you could see the ties between him and religion because in his speeches he would speak more and more about God and higher power. 
и высшие силы. Every speech, его выступления his все больше became more and more like a preach, а результаты не заставляли себя ждать. To them it seems mystical that what brings all of us together, hundreds of thousands of people, that forces them to be overtaken by wants and needs. And this command was given to us by the commander of all commanders, God himself, at the, the time of the creation of the Germans. And they were in awe of his teaching, because he taught them having power and not as a bookworm. As you remember, first there's a show walking around with the burning sticks and then microphones and then two hours of preaching. And he enters the Capernaum. And on Sunday, he goes to the synagogue and preaches. Even then, when our group was only seven people, at that time we had our two principles. First of all, we wanted to be the group with the world outlook. And this is why this group wished to have non-compromising power in Germany. And exactly like that, in the period of hundreds of years, the Orthodox Christian Church was acting just as that. They're the only ones that show religious impatience towards other religious groups. But Hitler didn't stop there. And these public speeches that Hitler had done, he had traveled through the whole country. And the tour of Hitler had started, you know, he sat in his automobile that had the roof cut off. And he would travel to Bavaria, Curl, all over the country. And, you know, he would hang out with his Nazi escort all over the place. And all over, he would perform in front of the working class, in front of the Christians, the working class, the Christians. Everywhere he gave out his book called My Kampf. It was printed many, many millions of copies. And all the Germans received this free book that was written by Hitler. Now focus your attention that the Orthodox Christianity also starts from a book called the Holy Bible. The actions of Hitler strictly fall under the steps of the technology. In 1933, President Gendenberg has freed von Schleicher from his position and has made Hitler the head of state of Germany. After climbing the mountain, he had called upon those who he wanted, and they have came. And a whole system unfolds that Goebbels was the head of. Goebbels comes to the stage and pumps ideology into the people. At night, 10th of May, 1933, in all of the university cities of Germany, students had gathered to throw into the fire books of authors that didn't fit the Nazi ideology. Goebbels was speaking in Berlin and said that you are all doing a great deed by burning history. Infusion and convincing, infusion and convincing, infusion and convincing. Who works like that? Why did Goebbels choose to act this specific way? It's as simple as just remembering how the church, the methods that the church uses to influence, based on official history of the Orthodox Christianity, they have always burned and physically destroyed that didn't fit their ideology. And it continues to this day. Not too long ago, loyal monks were burning the books of Alexei Osipov. Osipov is a very famous and well-known professor of the Moscow Spiritual Academy. Walking by, he saw Levia Afeva. He was sitting at the place of tax collection. He had said, get up and follow me, and he did. 
Next, Hitler started inviting office holders and officials to the raid. They mistaken us by thinking we are like them. But we have only one goal, to kill all the other organizations. He had created a law to where you could not be an official in office if you were not part of the raid. So he pulled this law through Bundestag to where if you wanted to be a government official, you had to be part of the raid. People that were part of the raid, they were put into official government jobs and held them. Jobs such as police, the army, the reason and the base on which this all was allowed was a law that was passed on December 1st, 1933. This law made it to where there was one ruler in Germany. On one side, Hitler was having his rape meetings, very peaceful meetings, but on the other side, he was burning people in stoves. And Jesus had said, the unhealthy have the need for a healer. I call upon not the righteous or noble people, I call upon sinners to wash their sins. On the 30th of January, in Germany, the coin has been flipped. And I don't think that the opponents that were acting against us back then are doing it now. Next stage of the technology is flipping over the demons, beating up demons. And as far as for Hitler, you guys know, he was doing that regularly. He, you know, he did it from morning to dawn. He even created concentration camps because he thought that the Jews were the demons. You know, he caught Jews all over the place and he cremated them in, in ovens. That's all he did from morning to dawn is to flip over demons. The people were terrified and ready to flee. In the spring of 1939, were created the first concentration camps. At that time, nobody wanted to see anything like that. As you can understand, somebody can get tired of flipping over demons. So he found himself a friend. And this person that he found, you know, he looked at it as psychotherapy. He liked to do it. His name was Kaltenbrunner. And Kalter Brunner was destroying the Jewish people just as Hitler told him to do, and he was doing it very well. Hitler wasn't even a part of all that, but the demons were getting flipped over. Kalten Brunner was the head of the Gestapo. After Austria had joined Germany in 1938, Kalten Brunner had made himself a great career in Gestapo and he was answering for the concentration camps. In 1944, he became the head of RSH. Two years prior, when the physical killing was at its peak, a letter had came to Germany from the Holy Mount Athos, the text of which we will be reading word by word. You know. Germany will be Orthodox soon. The Holy Fathers have predicted that. The great king that is ruling Germany, the one who has started the massacre of the Jews and the Bolsheviks, and all of us are favoring him for that. This is the beginning of the prediction. At that time, nobody was even hiding the warm relationship between Holy Mount Athos and the Nazis. Right now there's going to be texts in front of you written by a German soldier inside of a guest book on Mount Athos. I wish that all of Europe will look up to the holy monks one day and comes to him and falls on the knees and begs if you want, please cleanse me. And Jesus has reached his hand, touched this person, said, I want to be cleansed. And at that moment, he was cleansed. And when I was a soldier and nobody knew me, I swore to myself to start a war against him and never stop.
until their ways are not fully pushed out of our lives. Modesty and action. That's the 16th step. Gitler was modest. He walked around in the military bushlot like Stalin did. And he was very active. He was always showing Germany Naval Chamberman, with all his power, wanted to keep peace. Edouard de la Dia, the Prime Minister of France, he also wanted to stop the war. But the war could not be stopped. In the meantime, on Athos, the Holy Fathers were hoping for the win of the Tsar, and they would hang his portraits in the Orthodox temples. The portrait of a person that killed hundreds of thousands of Jews. At the same time, in the gas cameras of Auschwitz and the crematories of Asvensum, at the time when they tried to erase from the face of the earth the Jewish people, the Holy Fathers that were praying on Mount Athos continued to send letters to Hitler. With deep respect and signatures below, we are the Holy Fathers of the 20 monasteries of Mount Athos. We are very honored to write to you and have a request. We ask that you take under personal protection the holy Mount Athos, that same very place that we are the representatives of. In return, we offer our prayers and our hope and faith in your winning of the war. We wish you lots of health, and all of us are signing this letter with great respect. After completing the 16 steps of the technology, Hitler had broken the algorithm. And of course, the result is well known. The technology of Athos allows to gain power without blood. But Hitler could not restrain himself and started the Second World War. A war in which 50 million people died. It is completely obvious that Hitler was prepared using the technology of Mount Athos. In that case, we have a question, who or what pushed Hitler to break the algorithm? Right now we're gonna say our hypothesis and bring some facts to the table. Starting in 1924, in the Soviet Union, very actively started the anti-religious propaganda. At that time in the Soviet Union lived about 147 million people. The dominating religion was the Orthodox religion. The command center of Orthodox religion, which was Mount Athos, started to experience huge multi-billion dollar losses starting from 1920s. This had to be stopped and the money had to be redirected back to Mount Athos. Thanks to atheism and anti-religious propaganda, the early stages of the Soviet Union, Stalin was able to make a safe zone so that huge amounts of people were not influenced by the so-called adaptive bloc, one of which was the Orthodox Church. So after analyzing carefully analyzing history and looking at the facts, we come to the conclusion that the 21st century Orthodox Church is an ideological base and a corporate business religion of Mount Athos. As you can see, 
to keep a grasp on the congregation, the nowadays Orthodox religion, they're ready for radical actions such as the actions of Hitler. Take a look again, who do you go to to do your confessions to? And whose ideology and speeches are you tying with the will of God? And we must see that there are hundreds of examples of missionaries, maybe even thousands. An example, the Kieva Picherskaya Lavra. In 1951, a holy monk, a missionary from Athos, has created this structure. His name was Monk Antonio. Take a look around you. On average, the government changes every four years. Recessions change the state of things in the world. They make huge business structures go bankrupt. But after Monk Antonio had came, the Orthodox religion stayed the same for a thousand years. What does that mean, you ask? Well, the world is ruled by technologies, but most of you search for the algorithm, and that is why you are forced to be in a recession all your life. And as you always say, someone else is at fault, and that someone else is the one who has the technologies.